Good morning, good morning, good morning. Today we come to the most important dynamic of all in all the craft of story. If you want to become a master of story, this is the one. Okay, we've talked about the role of the author, we've talked about the role of the characters. In this set of videos, we're going to talk about the all important role of the receiver of your story. So everything from here on in is about storification. Okay, if you remember back in those early days of these videos, we talked about knowledge gaps and subtext. The author embeds knowledge gaps into a narrative in order that the receiver of the story is triggered by those gaps to provide the knowledge that goes into the gaps. Okay, the knowledge that goes into the gaps is called subtext. This is the magic and the wonder of story, okay? This is what makes your receiver go, oh my God, I love this story. And the reason they take ownership of your story and feel like it's theirs, it's because they've contributed to it in very meaningful ways because of the gaps you embedded in the narrative. So mastery of storytelling is the ability to create the conditions for subtext. And when the receiver provides that subtext, does all that work in their own mind, that is storification. So this set of videos is all about how you cause that to happen in the mind of your receiver, okay? So what I'm gonna do is just give you a couple of simple examples. We'll use one from real life to demonstrate what happens in the mind of the receiver, and we'll use a story example, a simple example, to demonstrate the kinds of ways I'm gonna ask you to be thinking through the course of these videos that will help you to maximize and understand the power in your story. So we'll use Little Red Riding Hood for that, and then we'll get stuck into the body of material that's going to teach you all this. If you remember, we've had this sort of triplet going on the whole time, you know, what happens, how it happens, and what it means. And this is no different, okay? The storification component is what it means. So we start off with signs and signifiers, if you remember what things are. Then we move on to what they do when you put them in a narrative context, okay? What happens, and then we get what your receiver makes of it the knowledge and the meaning they inherit from experiencing what happens, okay? So if you take a fishing net, what is it? It's a pile of string on a dock, okay? What does it mean to, if you're a one-year-old or if you're an alien that's dropped out of the sky? It doesn't mean anything. It's just a pile of string and you think, well, I have no idea. It doesn't mean anything, okay? So we have to place it, like everything else, into a narrative context in order for it to make sense. Okay, so let's add change over time to this fishing net. Some guys come along and they unfurl it and then they stick it on the back of a boat and then they fire up the boat, they drive off into the sea, hang it off the back and things get caught in the net which you can then bring back to the shore. Aha, now we have a narrative. It hangs together, it's a cause effect chain of logic that makes sense. And as soon as we have that in mind, a narrative that has an outcome and makes sense, now we begin to work on that. We draw on our own knowledge and experience of life, and we say, what does that mean? Okay, so what does it mean? Well, you sit down in the evening to a nice fish dinner. Wow, that's what it means, isn't it? It's nutrition, it's sustenance, it's life itself, okay? So we have a fishing net that's a thing, it does stuff, and then we have human meaning that comes out of all this in the mind of the receiver. And the same principles apply to story. This is what goes on in the mind of the receiver when they receive a story. What happens? How does it happen? And then what does it mean? So if we take Little Red Riding Hood, okay? What happens? Well, a little girl goes out, she helps her mum to bake some cakes and then she goes out to visit grandma. So we have the basics there to orientate us straight away. The framing for the story is a character plan, okay? We know what motivates Little Red Riding Hood. We know what her end game is to look after grandma and we know the journey she's on to achieve that. So we're framed up, orientated straight away, okay? Now, you'll remember we can't just give 
our character everything they want straight away. They can't just get fulfillment because that wouldn't be a story, okay? We need a why now imperative, if you remember that. So we need some obstacle to get in the way of her journey. So let's introduce another character. It's a bad guy, it's a big bad wolf, okay? And he has his agenda too. So they meet and he distracts her and he convinces her to go and pick flowers in the forest to go to take to grandma as well, okay? And then he runs off to grandma's, tricks his way into her house by pretending to be Little Red Riding Hood, eats her up, dresses in her clothes and gets into bed. Okay, so he has a plan as well. We understand his motive and we understand what fulfillment means to him, which is to eat Little Red Riding Hood. Okay, so he's on his journey. He has his character plan. She has her journey and she has her character plan and they're on a collision course. They are in conflict. So everything's perfect here. In the character zone, we have a knowledge gap through subterfuge because he's dressed up as grandma and he's going to try and trick Little Red Riding Hood. OK, he set a trap and we're worried that she's going to fall into it. So we have that knowledge gap through suspense, you might remember, whereby there's a ticking bomb there. His trap is going to spring and she's walking into it. And also notice that our wolf has that wonderful thing we talked about in the character section, an inner arc and an outer arc. OK, so on the outer arc, he's being a wonderful chap, isn't he? He's being awfully helpful and he's positively contributing to Little Red Riding Hood's day, suggesting she buys some flowers. OK, on his inner arc, he wants to eat her. As Soon as you have a character with those inner and outer arcs, you have a knowledge gap in motivation. Little Red Riding Hood does indeed fall into the trap and he eats her, okay? Now, this is a peripeteer twist in the tragic Aristotle sense. So we've also got the harmatia and the anagnorisis, which is a realization for the audience that this is going to go tragically wrong. And then the peripeteer twist, pure Aristotle, it does. And she gets eaten, okay? Now, this is devastating for a four-year-old absorbing this story and it's at this point we have a complete narrative that makes sense we know what happened and now we have a complete narrative which we understand we understand the nature of wolves the nature of naive girls and we understand the trap that he set and all these human overlays that we put onto what's happened now it makes complete sense and now we overlay meaning okay so we take away a meaning from this which is not stated in the narrative itself. Young children shouldn't talk to strangers, okay? There's the meaning. There's a very simple example of a narrative that makes sense and then we overlay meaning, the moral message in a children's story. So I'm gonna show you all the different ways that you can uh, storify and we're gonna talk about the way an author has to behave to use these dynamics, okay? Because when you tell a story like we just did, we're telling from the receiver's perspective, a beginning and a middle and an end. For an author, we're gonna look at it completely differently, okay? You end up with a beginning and a middle and an end because that's inevitable, you can't avoid it. But what you need to know as an author is your storification. That's the ultimate power of your story rather than the ending. And when you have that ultimate power, we build underneath that. So we work back from knowing it. It might take you months to find your storification, maybe years. Once you've got it, then you have your story power and you frame and orientate your audience. And then you have characters take action in their story world that are designed to deliver that storification. So we work backwards from the storification, we put in the framing and the character actions, and then the cherry on the top is we shoot the framing and the character actions through with holes. In other words, we embed knowledge gaps in order to maximize the power in your story and the beauty and excellence of your storification. Right, I hope that makes sense and by the end of this next, I don't know, what is it going to be, six or eight videos, you will be a master of story. Let's get stuck in.